In late 2015, Dwarf Fortress players started finding dead cats, and that's not necessarily a problem, we're talking about one of the most ambitious video games ever made that aims to simulate even the most minute details of the fantasy worlds it generates, and sometimes that's going to involve the occasional dead cat, but we are talking about quite a lot of dead cats, like more dead cats than you'd usually expect. And yeah, there's no real nice way of saying this, they were also found typically covered in their own vomit. You may have heard parts of this story before, it's become for many the Dwarf Fortress story to tell, and for good reason, but when I asked Torn Adams, the game's co-creator, to tell me his favourite anecdote from the last 15 years he spent working on this thing with his brother, he picked this one out right away. So yeah, even if you have heard it before, there's plenty of extra context here which I think you might enjoy. Let's talk about all those dead cats. So with each Dwarf Fortress update, Tarn expects a couple of hundred bug reports to be filed by players, and that's about what he saw as he released version 0.42.01 in December of 2015. Most of these reports detail things like crashes or typos, that sort of thing. But one of them, posted just a couple of days after the update had gone live, immediately stood out. User Fortuna Draken posted an issue they'd encountered with the following description. My current fort has two cats that have both died for apparently no reason at all. There's no combat logs, and both are covered in vomit. Others on the forum have been having the issue and apparently it's due to alcohol poisoning, but cats aren't supposed to drink alcohol, so it's beyond me how they're doing so. Can confirm that this exists, adds another user in the comments. Have lost several cats to it, interestingly, cats appear to be the only animal affected. Tarn, upon reading this, was just as bemused as his players. Yes, the latest version of Dwarf Fortress had added taverns to the game, which meant that dwarves could you know, drink alcohol to an excessive amount and uh, enough that they would need to vomit or perhaps even die if they kept on going, but cats wouldn't do that. Cats couldn't do that. He programmed the game himself and so knew that they should have no desire to drink beer or wine or anything like that, and so it didn't seem to make sense. What was going on here? Well, aside from drinking too much, there are only a couple of other reasons at this stage why a creature might throw up in Dwarf Fortress. Certain venoms can trigger it, so if a cat had been bitten by a rattlesnake, for example, they may vomit, but that wasn't a new feature. Why would it have so suddenly become such a widespread issue. Now, that that couldn't be it. It had to be something to do with that latest version, Tom concluded, something to do with the introduction of taverns. Now, the other way for a creature like a cat to feel nausea was if they were involved in some kind of physical fight and got punched in the stomach. That would do it, but could that really be what was happening here? Dwarves were drinking too much, getting into bar fights with cats and then punching them in their stomachs? That sounds pretty far-fetched, to be honest, but this is Dwarf Fortress, after all. Thankfully, before he delved too far into that hypothesis, Tom was provided with a number of save files from players that had been experiencing this dead cats covered in vomit problem, and as a result, he was able to look at the debug code to try and figure out what was going on. And well, it was not snake venom, and nobody had been punching cats in their tiny feline stomachs. Nope, despite his initial thinking, the cats were actually getting drunk. Really, really drunk. So drunk that they died almost immediately. But how were they drinking alcohol in the first place? That's still the real mystery here. Unlike dwarves, cats have no desire to drink this stuff, especially not to an extent that they die. So, so what was going on? Well, the answer to that question lies in an update, not from 2015, but from several years before that. Much earlier in the development of Dwarf Fortress, it was decided that if a dwarf got covered in blood or dirt or goop for whatever reason, that contaminant would remain on their body until they washed it off, usually later on the same day as they returned home. And that made sense for the most part, but you have to remember, this game cares so much about the details. A dwarf isn't just going to get covered in dirt as a general statement. Instead, each body part is specified. So they might have dirt on their chest, or their left arm, or their right eyeball, or all of the above. But the thing about having dirt on your eyeballs, you may have noticed already, is that you're not going to want to leave it there until you have a shower later on that evening. No, nope, you're going to want to get rid of that fairly promptly. So at some point, Tarn decided that eyelids, which already existed in the game but didn't really have a function, should have some kind of cleaning mechanism. So as a dwarf blinked, they'd remove whatever contaminant was on their eye. Cool, no more walking around with dirt on your eyeballs, that's good. And he gets from enabling this function for every creature in the game, well, the ones that have eyelids anyway, until eventually he reaches cats. Now, if you've played Dwarf Fortress before, you'll know that Tarn is pretty into cats. He's given them a bunch of extra behaviours over the years, like they follow people around, head bump each other, bring vermin back to their owners, they do cat stuff. And so as he's adding this function for their eyelids to actually work and clean the eyeballs, he thinks, you know what, cats just like cleaning themselves anyway, all the time. That's, that's their whole thing. And so he uses that eyelid mechanic but applies it to the cat's entire body. And because he's the co-creator of Dwarf Fortress, he obviously didn't stop there. To quote the man himself, 
We don't always obey a conservation of matter principle, but we try and do it when we can. And so, if they clean their paws with their little cat tongues, where does that matter go? Of course, they ingest it, says Ton. You might now be starting to guess where this story is going. Back to the taverns. So right, here's an extra thing worth knowing. When you ask one of your dwarves to go and perform a task, say mining, they have a tendency to drop whatever they're carrying at the time and just rush off in the direction of whatever it is that you've asked them to do, which means if they're holding a mug of wine or beer at the time, that thing's just going straight over their shoulder as they go on about their business. Now, taverns in Dwarf Fortress usually have bartenders working there, and part of their job is to make sure that they pick up any empty mugs left around the tavern. So as the dwarf that you've just given an instruction to chucks his beer and wanders off, the bartender then goes to pick up the empty mug. However, there's a puddle of alcohol that's just left on the floor. Which means if another dwarf walks through the puddle, they start tracking alcohol all over the place, and suddenly your entire tavern is just covered in the stuff. And so when a cat walks into the bar, they're gonna get wine and beer and whatever else all over their little cat paws. And because years ago, Tarn had decided they should clean themselves and ingest whatever substance they're removing, it meant suddenly there was now a way for cats to consume alcohol. And the thing is, so far, everything I've mentioned here is working as intended. Tarn hadn't been thinking really about the possibility of cats drinking beer when he introduced taverns and inebriation to the game, but that's not really how he thinks about programming Dwarf Fortress. It's a game of so many, many, many systems that inevitably work together in ways that both he and the player base find surprising. So yeah, as far as he's concerned, cats cleaning themselves and ingesting alcohol, that's great. No bugs so far. But the problem was the numbers were slightly off. The real issue at the heart of this is that when a cat walked through a puddle of beer, Dwarf Fortress then believed it was carrying an entire mug's worth of the stuff around on its feet. So when it went to clean itself, it was ingesting a, relatively speaking, if you're a cat, enormous amount of alcohol. Because of course Dwarf Fortress takes into account the size of a creature when figuring out how much alcohol it would need in its bloodstream in order to feel the effects of said alcohol. Of course it does that. In fact, the game doesn't just treat inebriation as a binary state either, like most games tend to do. There are several stages that creatures go through as they consume alcohol in Dwarf Fortress. Nausea, dizziness, erratic behaviour, thoughtlessness, unconsciousness, and finally an increasing impairment to breathing, which will eventually result in death. Usually this is a steady process, as dwarves experience all of these symptoms to some extent, which then increases as they drink more lovely beers. However, the cats were going through this entire cycle in just a moment. Yes, they were drinking so much alcohol that they died, but before this happened, they experienced almost all of the other effects too. And we know this, weirdly enough, because they vomited first. That's the, that's the proof, and it's also a weird sentence to get excited about, I'm sorry. But it means, it, well, it tells us they experienced extreme nausea in order to be able to throw up, which in turn tells us they must have also been dizzy and erratic and unconscious, and all of that happened in like a second, I guess. Wow, that's... One hell of a ride. The fix itself, which went over a few days after the initial bug report, is a fairly straightforward one. Cats still walk through alcohol and get it on their paws and clean it off and ingest it, but the numbers have been rebalanced somewhat. Which means, wonderfully, if you do see a cat walking through your tavern whilst playing Dwarf Fortress, they've almost certainly got a slight buzz on, even if you can't visibly see the symptoms. But that right there is what Dwarf Fortress is. At its core, it's knowing that the game is simulating such a phenomenal level of detail even when you don't always notice the small stuff. It's a game with so many interlocking systems, many of which may seem inconsequential and considered as standalone mechanics, but together, create a world and a game that captures something really important about in-depth simulation. The chaos of it all. The fact that cats ingest whatever they clean off their paws is unlikely to have a large impact on your game outside of the short-lived bug we've just talked about, but there's the possibility that in someone's playthrough, at some point, somewhere, it could. A series of events in which a cat plays an oddly significant role and leads to the next extraordinary Dwarf Fortress tale. Or maybe not. Maybe it doesn't do anything, ever. And even then, I love that it exists. The Adams Brothers have been developing Dwarf Fortress for around 15 years now and claim to have another 20 ahead of them before they reach version 1.0 of the game. There's nothing quite like what they've made. And I think somehow, strangely enough, this story about dead cats covered in vomit sort of gets to the heart of why that is. And anyway, it's just, it's just a great story. Hope you liked it. All right then, thank you for watching this week's episode of Here's a Thing. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a like on YouTube. That is always good. And yes, you might have noticed that the schedule has changed a little bit recently. This show started as a weekly thing. And it turns out there's quite a lot of work involved just in terms of finding the right stories, speaking to the right people, shooting and editing. It's difficult to do that every seven days. So we're gonna look at a fortnightly schedule from this point onwards. 
and hopefully that means we can keep the quality up without worrying too much about the quantity. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, if you want to watch more of these, if this is your first one, uh, the last couple are here and you can find a playlist on YouTube's channel page. Thanks very much and we'll see you next time.